Could you say what a pathogen is? So a, a pathogen is really a microbe that uh, causes disease. And, and let me expand on that. Um, the human body, um, you could almost say, is covered with microorganisms. Uh, so, for example, on the skin or lining the gut. But they don't invariably cause disease. You know, they are sometimes referred to as friendly bacteria. But it's those microorganisms um, that cause disease uh, that we refer to as being pathogens. So now that we've talked about what a pathogen is, could you think of any specific examples? Okay, there are um, several examples of a pathogen. Uh, and if we look at the different types of microbes, which are bacteria, viruses, and fungal, I'll give you an example of each. So with a bacteria, uh, one could look at salmonella, that causes gastroenteritis. Uh, for a virus, one can look at influenza that causes flu or uh, HIV, which causes immunosuppression. And for a fungal infection, one can think of an example as of athlete's foot. So then once the pathogen is inside the host, how does the host respond and is the host always successful? So this is where really the immune system starts to kick in. Now, a major important barrier to infection is indeed the skin. Um, but once a microbe uh, enters, say, through the skin, either via a cut or through um, the nasal pharynx system, and if they are actually able to, to get that far, what happens? There are a group of what we call white blood cells, in particular phagocytes and neutrophils, that will able to uh, gobble up the various um, pathogens. These are referred to as scavenger cells. Uh, but if they're able to um, bypass these group of scavenger cells, um, which is referred to as part of the innate immune system. Then they'll encounter what we call the adaptive immune system. And in particular, there will be the production of antibodies uh, that will specifically recognize these pathogens and then remove them. Uh, and let me expand on the adaptive immune system because this is quite important. It's because once you meet the antigen on many uh, occasions, is what you will build up, is what we call immunological memory. So that when you meet the pathogen again, the immune system will respond quicker and greater. And in fact, that's really the basis of vaccination. So are there any ways that you can think of um, how pathogens can subvert this host response? So how viruses, um, for ex viruses is a perfect example, I should say, on how they're able to um, sort of divert the immune response because what viruses will do is that they will change their appearance. It's a term referred to as genetic mutation. So what they will try and do is they will change the way they actually appear so that once they are encountered by the immune system, the immune system actually doesn't recognize them. They haven't seen them before. So what happens then is that the virus is able to propagate and grow at a time when the immune system is just working out what the virus is. How bacteria can do that is, for example, like TB. TB actually stays within the host cells uh, and therefore evades the immune system and an immune response. Do you think there are any fundamental differences um, in the pathogenicity or their ability to cause disease between bacteria and viruses? Yeah, there, there's differences. So, you know, bacteria, for example, that can cause cholera, um, it's the actual products that the bacteria produces, um, referred to as toxin. It's the toxin mm -hmm. that's produced that actually causes disease and not the bacteria itself. Um, examples where it's the actual bacteria, so for example in TB, that's caused by the bacteria of microtuberculosis and it's the presence of that bacteria that gives disease. Whereas for viruses, it's their presence that's really the main problem. And what viruses do is really on the basis of their life cycle. So okay. viruses require the host cell to actually divide and using that host machi machinery, they often then will lead to cell lysis and so it will be destructions of tissues. Can you explain why antibiotics don't work against viruses? Yeah, so that's really related, as I mentioned, to the fact that viruses' life cycle is that they require the host in order really to propagate. They require the host uh, DNA and RNA machinery and in that regards then, they don't actually use 
um, uh, should not so much use. They shouldn't really use um, sort of the antibiotics properties. So antibiotics invariably work by destroying cell walls, um, the, the ability of cells to divide, mm -hmm. which is why it targets bacteria, unlike viruses. 